If you've been watching my recent videos, you'll know that I just completed building these cabinets up here. The one behind me was the most recent one. I need to make doors for it next. And, you know, I've already made doors to this cabinet up here and I made a separate video about that. So I didn't want to reproduce that exactly. What I want to do with this video is go into a bit more detail on how you would size the doors to fit on the cabinet and talk a little bit more about that. And this would be a good example of the kind of instruction that I bring to the build courses that I have on the Makers Mob, or if you're a $5 per month contributor on Patreon, you have access to those as well. And if you're interested, there's a link to both of those in the video description. The first thing I wanna talk about is the style of door I have here. These are known as overlay, as in they fit over the face frame, or in this instance back here, which is a frameless type cabinet, they sit over the edge of the panel. And the distinction with these ones is that they're easier to size and to fit than the other type, which is inset. Inset actually fits in the opening and will be flush with the frame on the front here. Some people much prefer those. However, these, like I said, are a lot easier to handle. Before you build the doors, you need to know how big they have to be. And that's largely dependent on the type of hinge that you're using. In this instance, I'm using these, which are concealed European style, and they mortise into the back of the door here, and they mount on a plate on the inside of the cabinet there. And they overlap the frame on the hinge side by a quarter inch. You have to, you have to look at the hardware you're getting because there's gonna be quite a variation. You need to know that before you start building the door. So I know that these overhang by a quarter inch on the sides here, on both sides, and that I need a gap between the doors because these meet in the middle of roughly around one eighth of an inch. Eighth of an inch or a little bit less looks the best. If it's too open, then it doesn't look good. However, these hinges do have a lot of adjustment so you can close the gap or open it as you need to. I'm going to use this set of doors as an example for measuring. All right, when I measure across I have 32 and 5 8. My opening however on the inside between you know the sides here is 32 inches. So that extra 5 8 of an inch, a quarter inch on both sides that, or that lips over the frame, and also that one eighth of an inch gap in the middle. So if I take my opening over here and I measure this, I have 47 and an eighth. If I add that five eighths, the same that I have here, to that, I get 47 and three quarters. That's the total width. However, to get the width of the doors, you have to subtract that one eighth of an inch for the gap, and then divide it by two. For the height of the doors, these overhang the face frame on the cabinet by a half inch on the bottom and a half inch on the top. So all you need to do is measure that vertical opening, that's 35 and three quarters, add one inch to it, and that'll give you the overall dimensions of the door for height, just 36 and three quarters. So back over to the cabinet that I want to build the doors for. My inside measurement was 47 and an eighth. When I add my 5 eighths to that, I get 47 and 3 quarters. That's the total width. When I subtract the 1 eighth of an inch from that and divide it by 2, I get 23 and 13 sixteenths. So that'll be the width of my doors. I'm going to actually make them a little bit wider than that. I'm going to go to uh, 23 and 7 eighths, ignoring that 1 eighth inch gap, in other words, just so that I'll have something to play with. If I wind up that I have to plane something off, I'd rather have that ability rather than trying to glue something on. So 23 and 7 eighths for the width. Now for the height, I want the doors to go right up flush with the top of the cabinet and then they need to come down on this rail right here. This is actually the shelf. 
I don't have a face frame like I did over there. I want it to kind of not split it, but just above that, like a quarter inch down on, on this shelf. So that's going to make it 43 and an eighth. And once again, since I'm right up to the top of the cabinet here on, on these, I have a little bit of leeway to move them down. So that's the total size of these two doors right here. This door underneath, which is uh, horizontal, it folds down, okay, on this piano hinge that I have right here. So it's just a matter of matching the overall width of the two doors on top, which is 47 and 3 quarters. That will be the length. And then for the height, um, it depends on how you orient this hinge, but I think it's going to be from the top of the shelf on the bottom down here up to a quarter inch on this and that'll be 14 and three quarters. Now that I have my dimensions for the like the outside of the doors figured out, I need to figure out the length of the individual parts. So for the two bigger ones, they're 43 and an eighth inches tall. Those styles, which are the vertical members, those will be 43 and an eighth. So I can mark down that I need four of those. Four at 43 and an eighth. I always do this, by the way. I always itemize each part that I need because even if you've been doing this for a long time, you have a tendency to forget. And if you cut the part the wrong length, it's hard to uh, undo that. So that's the styles, which are the verticals. I also need four more for the rails, which are the horizontal. And the width of these doors is 23 and 7 eighths. My stock, I think it's two inches. It should be two inches, but I'll measure it. It's actually two and a sixteenth. So I need to subtract uh, four and an eighth from, what is it, 23 and 7 eighths. So that would be 19 and 3 quarters, I'm pretty sure. So I need four that are 19 and 3 quarters. All right, that's for the four big doors on top, the vertical ones. For the lower one, um, it's kind of different because the styles on that one still go right from top of the door to the bottom of the door, but those are the shorter ones. And so those will be the 14 and 3 quarter inch ones, but I only need two of those. So two at 14 and 3 quarters. And then I need two that will be that same two and an eighth subtracted from the 47 and 3 quarters which is uh, 43 and 5 eighths, 43 and 5 eighths. I'm gonna confirm all this with the calculator after this, by the way, just to make sure that I haven't messed up because now is the time you wanna mess up when you're writing it down. You don't wanna mess up when you bring it over to the side to cut it. I confirmed my figures and everything worked out well. My brain apparently is working this morning. Uh, the stock is here, it's all clamped up. I cut this, I don't know, about three weeks ago. And if you want your stock to stay nice and flat and not twist all the heck, clamp it up like this if you're not going to use it right away. If you're going to use it right away, the actual joinery of the door should keep it flat, as long as it was flat to begin with when you cut it out. So I'm going to release it from the clamps and then I'll bring it to the miter saw and start cutting it up. I plane these continuously, so there shouldn't be a lot of snipe, but I'm feeling both ends to compare them to see which one has the least amount. And this one here does, so I'll put that in. And what I'm doing here is I'm trimming off the end very close to the end, and that'll be my first cut. There's obvious snipe on this one. But there's very little on this one. The idea being that I'll cut a very small amount off this end, and then to cut it to length, I'll probably be cutting a lot more off the other end.
I want to square up the end and I'm using my brand new stainless steel square that I just made using just hand tools, a hacksaw and files. And this is an example of the type of exclusive video I'm putting on Patreon now at any contribution level. If you want to see how I made these squares, there's a link in the description that'll take you right there. Okay, I gotta stop here and talk about a mistake I made. I talked recently about how making a video while you're trying to do something that's fairly complex to begin with can be distracting. And indeed, I was distracted. Certain parts here have to be longer because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting a mortise or a groove in the edge of these pieces of stock and I need for the other part that fits into it to be cut in the ends of the shorter pieces or the rails okay so I actually have to add to the length of the let's say the rails on top they have to be longer and the rails on the bottom which are 43 and 5 8 both of these have to be one inch longer. So not 43 and 5 eighths, it'd be 44 and 5 eighths. I'm glad I caught that. And instead of 20 and 3 quarters, I mean, instead of 19 and 3 quarters, it'll be 20 and 3 quarters. Now that all the parts are cut to length, I can cut that groove that I talked about before. And that groove serves two purposes. First of all, this is the joinery for the doors. So it's what keeps them together, the mortise and tenon joint, I guess you could call it. And it also gives a place for the panel to be. The panel is actually gonna fit inside the groove. Now, think about the panel, uh, it's plywood, I have a scrap of it here, and this is important because what I need to do is I need to make a sample. I want the back of these doors to be flat, especially the one that's on the bottom because it swings down and it becomes a work surface actually. So having it set in would be bad. You'd have a lip there that would catch dirt. So I want it to be absolutely flush on the back. So I've got a scrap of the same wood that I have here, same size, same thickness, and I have the plywood that equals the plywood that I'm going to use for the panel. And I can't stress enough how important it is to make samples for these things. It's really the only way to make sure you're getting perfect results when you go to cut the stock that you're using. In other words, any mistakes that you make, you really want to make them on the sample and not on the stock itself. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to make the panel in the door so that it is rabbited down to about a quarter inch and that'll fit in the quarter inch groove that I'll cut in the parts. So my first cut will be a half inch deep and a half inch from the back side of the stock. All right, that first cut was a little bit too far towards the face, even though this is kind of rough looking. This is the face on the sample. So what I did was I moved the fence over closer and made a second cut and that got me right where I want to be. What I'm looking for is the back of the panel to be flush with the back of the style of rail and that cut the line up right there so that it'll slip right in. When I do cut the rabbit in this one, it'll fit right in there. So now that I have this dialed in, I can go ahead and cut all my parts, that first cut, and then what I'll do is I will move my fence over again so that I can widen this cut out and make it a quarter inch. That's what I'm shooting for. Doesn't have to be perfect. The main thing is that, well, the important thing is that the panel fits into the groove. 
and then the tenons that you cut on the end of the pieces fit into the groove as well. So now I have all the grooves cut and I can move on to making the tenons in the ends of the parts that need tenons. And once again, I'm going to use my sample. Once I have it dialed in with the sample, I'll be able to make all my cuts on the face side of all the parts that I need to do. All right, I've got all those sides cut on all six pieces that need to be cut. And I double checked to make sure they were the right ones. And now I need to cut the other side, which is lower. Now I don't have to change the stop on my mini table saw sled here. That's the, we're still gonna be the same depth this way. However, it needs the blade needs to cut uh, not as deep. So I'm gonna lower that down. Get it close and then I'll once again make a sample cut and then I'll check that in the groove in one of the pieces to see how it fits before I cut the other ones. If you watch the other video where I made those behind me, this part's going to be familiar. It's where I've temporarily put one of the uh, frames together the styles and rails and I need to do that to measure the panel size so it's also <laughs> a pretty good idea to double check the size to make sure that you didn't mess up and make it too big and this looks right anyway so you measure from the inside to the inside what you need to get is the dimension of the um, inside of that rabbit cut so that it goes up tight against the back of the panel and you can leave a little bit of a gap there it's not that big a deal for a door especially in a workshop but it's always nice to be able to make it exact because you really don't need to leave any gap for plywood plywood doesn't expand and contract that way so I've got 19 and three quarters and to get that I can also measure the distance on the rail from side to side. So the one that I really need the most is up and down, and that is exactly 39 inches. So I need two panels that will be 40, and then for the distance from side to side, it is 19 and three quarters, plus one is 20 and three quarters. That is the size of the panel before I cut the rabbit in. I have the panels cut to size and what I need to do next is yet another sample and this is a piece of plywood I used in the beginning and I'm going to be cutting it into this. The first cut I'm going to make is the vertical one. Now this should fit in there. I'm just going to break this off. Karate chop! No, I could do that, did you? 
Yeah, this should fit in there, and it doesn't. <laughs> it's a little bit too tight. You do not want this to be too tight. You want this to be a little bit slack, actually. Because this is going to get glued in after anyway, so it really doesn't hurt. So I'm just going to move my fence a little bit and make them very cut. And that is it exactly. And looks like it's steep enough too. So that's good. Okay, so that would be the first cut. I need to do all of the panels, make that cut all the way around. And when I'm making this cut, the outside face, the one that'll show, is going up against the fence. Once again, to put these together, I'm going to be using polyurethane construction adhesive. I'm only going to be putting it in the, like this side of the rabbit over here. The other side of the panel is the face, so I don't want glue squeeze out on the face whatsoever. So I'm putting it in there. I got to make sure that my style is turned around, so I put it in the right way. And lay a thin bead in here, and then I can set it into the style. Okay, that's the first one put together. I put a couple of clamps on the ends just to pull it in tight. And you can see there's the front. And then I'll try to get a look at the back. Completely flush on the back, which is exactly what I wanted. So I'll put this one down and I'll get started on putting the next one together. And then I'll need to leave these to dry overnight and then I can sand them, drill the holes, do the whole thing tomorrow to get them installed. Okay, so I put the hinges on the doors and got those installed. I made a separate video about that, a fairly short one, if you want to watch that. The link is in the description. Um, I've got them on, they close, they clear. However, I had to adjust the hinges over a little bit more than I wanted to actually because when I compare this door under here it's sticking out past so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one off and then I'm going to trim like a sixteenth of an inch off the edge very small amount Now that I know the doors fit, 
and will line up correctly, I can go ahead and finish sanding. And basically what's left to do is just to sand the edge here that I just cut on the table saw to make it smooth and round over the corners a little bit so they won't be so sharp. It's a lot easier to paint them while they're down on the workbench, so might as well do that and get that out of the way now. Using water-based polyurethane, it dries very quickly. In the meantime, I've got the lower door that the piano hinge gets installed on, and I'm just going to screw that onto the surface. I've just temporarily driven in a couple screws here to see how it works. Now, it's looking pretty good. It's lined up on the end here good. Um, I noticed when I took this out of the clamps this morning that there was a slight twist in the door, and I blame that mainly on how I oriented the plywood. Because you can see I've uh, made the grain vertical to match the doors above, if I had have ripped it off the edge of the sheet and made it go horizontal, it probably wouldn't have happened. So there are a couple of different ways I can deal with that. One is that I can move the hinge out a bit further on this side over here and move it further in because I actually have it spaced a little bit, right, to try to give it some clearance. So move it in on this side, pull it out on that side. That will correct some of it. And then I think I have a pair of magnets that I can use to hold the door closed. And being held in like that over time should remove some of the twists as well. Alright, now that looks pretty good, I think. I could lower these doors down a little bit, and probably I will. I'm going to take these off again tomorrow and give them another coat of water-based polyurethane, especially on the front, and I'll lower them down by about an eighth of an inch to close up that gap a little bit more. Not that it's a big deal, but I really like this. Now it falls down, it gives me this surface, and this area is going to be for sharpening. So I'll open it up, pull out what I need to use, and then slide it back in after I'm done and close up the door. Anyway, that wraps this one up. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. And I'll see you on the next one.